what's going on for you? How could I help? Um, so I'm actually, so the, the story is that I studied for the LSAT last year and planned to do a JD PhD. And my score was, so I took the July LSAT. My score was uh, 150. And so I canceled that score because I was able to. And decided ultimately that I would just apply with the PhD first. And that after I got into the PhD program, then I would apply for the JD and would go back and restudy for the LSAT. So I'm trying to basically figure out which courses are best and what's, I guess, the best strategy. I would like to ultimately take the August exam. So I have a bit of time um, and I'm trying to make sure that I divide enough time between, I'm doing my master's at Oxford right now. So between my master's work and the LSAT, but luckily I'm just in dissertation mode right now. So I have enough time to dedicate to both. So I'm just trying to figure out what the best study strategy is going to be so that way I can get the best score possible for the August exam. And then worst case scenario, I'll take the October exam. Sounds good. Okay. So you've been studying for a while already. You've used a few different resources. What do you see as being the biggest thing holding you back right now between now and the August LSAT? Uh, so my lowest scores were in logic reasoning, which of course is the largest section. <laughs> um, I did really well in logic games and felt very strong in that section. When I would study for it, I would pretty much ace that section every time, but I had a really hard time with the logic reasoning. Uh, I was just kind of starting to grasp the concepts um, and kind of figure out how to like the different types of questions and whatnot uh, at the time that I was preparing to take, I was going to take the September exam and then ultimately decided not to because I figured I had a better shot of getting into a PhD program. So I'm going to be starting at Yale for my PhD in the fall and would ultimately like to make sure that I have a good enough score to get into YLS or one of the neighboring law schools. Sure. Okay. So logical reasoning. Specifically, are there any particular question types that give you trouble or the section as a whole or the pacing? Um, so it's mostly the, the section at large. Um, I did have a little bit of trouble with the timing for logic games, but less so for logic reasoning. Um, when I remember when I would, when I would actually take the, the test, but the problem was that my logic reasoning score would be a lot lower. Um, I had my notes, which had like everything from when I was studying for it, but I left that in England. And of course, because of the current situation with the coronavirus, I'm not able to get those back at the moment. Um, so I can't remember exactly what it was, the which questions were my most difficult. I remember flaw questions were always a challenge. Um, I can't remember which other ones in particular. I, I have notes on it, but I just unfortunately don't have those with me. I hear you. When's the last time you did a logical reasoning section? Um, probably September. Yeah. Have you looked at the LSAT at all since September? The other sections um, either? No, because right now I'm just finishing up. A, I'm just finishing up a paper and doing a little bit of research on which courses I was thinking of taking. Uh, so at the moment, I'm trying to look at which like kind of study method is going to be the most beneficial and within the time frame. Um, so no, I have not looked back at an exam. I have all of my, I have a lot of the prep books and stuff here. Uh, so I was planning after I finished this essay to go back and take another practice exam and kind of start from there and also do research on which courses are going to be best. Gotcha. Okay. So my suggestion for you would be do a couple of timed logical reasoning sections okay. and see what gives you the most trouble for each okay. section that you do pick out the three to five hardest problems you encounter. Of course, speaking logical reasoning specifically, you want to look, review them and see what specifically gave you trouble about the question. Was it in the stimulus, the question stem, or the answer choices? If okay. you're evaluating the stimulus and analyzing it, you want to look at how they ramped up the difficulty level of the argument. Were they burying the conclusion in the middle of the, of the stimulus? Were they mm -hmm. failing to include indicator words? Were they using annoying words like unless, except, until, without that require a little bit of translation? Or if it was in the answer choices, what was tempting about the wrong answer that made you pick it and what ultimately makes it wrong? 
and what was discouraging about the right answer that pushed you away from it and what ultimately makes it correct. And I actually want you to articulate this, write it out as if you were writing an explanation for somebody else and you were showing your own thought process in terms of how you got from A to B, how you got from the wrong answer to the right one. Really lay it out for yourself. You may find that it's not really about the question type. Typically, those who are doing relatively well overall and getting a decent score, like I'm, I'm talking like someone who's already reached the point where they're going to be in the 160s, at least. Mm -hmm. They've got the foundation. You've taken a few courses already. You've done the basics. So you know flaw, strength, and weak, and necessary assumption, and so on. You know how you should approach each one. You might just be getting tough questions wrong because they're tough. Or yeah. you could be overthinking the easy ones. There's a lot that goes into this, aside from simply the basic foundational information. Okay. I, I see LSAT Prep as having three phases, accuracy, pacing, and endurance. And you could get things wrong just because of the pacing or just because of the endurance or because of those mindset issues that often come up. So I'd, mm -hmm. I'd want you to look into that. And okay. do some work on your own first because you may find that you don't need a course. If you've already done two of them and they still haven't gotten you where you want to be, the next two might not do it either. So yeah. I'd say slow down, make sure your foundation is solid, review in depth, and then and only then look for other options. And it could be that a course is what you need, or it could be that you need written explanations or, yeah. or a different guide. There's, and there's a variety of options. You might want to see whether you want an in-person course, a live online course, an on-demand video course, or a combination of all three. Yeah. I mean, I think now I'm looking more towards potentially doing the live online courses. The only thing is that I also like to do the, like, the self-paced lecture format so I can kind of slowly get, wrap my head around it. Um, but, I mean, do you have any particular suggestions on that front? Yeah, sure. And I have my own yeah. courses that include actually live online master classes and Q&As as well as on-demand video lessons. And okay. I don't... I don't offer it in person. I, I stopped doing it recently because of recent current events. Yep, I don't know that I don't know if any in person courses will be running anywhere over the next over the period between now speaking in March all the way through August. We'll see what happens. Yeah. But I think definitely things were tending online anyway, and this has only accelerated things. So yeah. they're all, the online is nice because it's also more affordable and more convenient. So you might yeah. you might look into that as well. Yeah, I think the the online is definitely going to be where I'm going to need to find a course because depending on where I'm at, either in England or in California, I need to be able to use the internet to kind of get whatever resources I need. So, Yeah, of course. Well, I'll, I would let you know that for my courses, when you join, you immediately get a detailed day-by-day -day study plan showing you exactly what to be doing every single day over the course of your prep. And it'll tell you, watch these course lesson videos, then complete these exact specific practice problems out of the official exams. And okay. then periodically I'll hold two to four live online masterclasses and Q and A's per month. And then okay. I also offer small group coaching as well, periodically twice per month. And all of that's on top of the on-demand video lessons, which include foundational videos and then recordings of previous in-person and live online classes I've taught. So okay. tons of resources there. And if you have any questions, of course, you can feel free to follow up with that now or later. Okay, perfect. Well, I think right now I'm at the stage where I need to go take a practice course or practice test again, um, kind of figure out where I'm at now and then assess which courses are going to be the best fit um, in the coming months, especially because now I'll be at home uh, <laughs> yeah. in this self-isolation. So it's plenty of time to study for the LSAT. <laughs> oh, absolutely. That's, that's at least a small silver lining here is that you've got your books and then of course, tons of LSAT resources are online as well. And do you know about the new digital LSAT prep test subscription service? Yeah, so I know that um, LSAC, LSAC is selling the, the practice tests for the tablet format. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. Okay, perfect. Well, luckily I have an iPad, so. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Yeah, so that's, that's where I would start. Just do a couple of sections of LR at least. But if you have the time and want to, do a couple of full-length exams just so you can get a picture of where, you are, where you're at overall. And then- okay engage in review like I described, and then take it from there. Okay, perfect. Well, I think I have the info that I, that I need and wanted to discuss with you, um, but I will keep in touch and 
I'll look into your course and see if that's the right fit for me. Awesome. Great. Well, glad I could help. Before we sign off, what would you say is the biggest insight you got from our call today? Um, I would say just figuring out how to review and also being more diligent about the review. I think you can learn as much from the questions that you got wrong as the ones you got correct and kind of like the way that you, you processed it. And I think, as you said, kind of actually writing out your explanation as to why you got something wrong is the best way to re go back into the review, especially when trying to figure out specifically what kinds of questions are catching you off guard. So I think that that's definitely some helpful advice. Great. Glad to hear it. Well, please, again, keep in touch. All right. Thanks so much, Steve. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.